All right, without further ado, D-Box, are you ready? I'm ready, brother. I'm ready. All right, let's make it happen. Bringing in the homie D-Box. Happy Sunday, bud. How are you? And look at this special guest that you've got going oh, on. Oh, yeah, man. You. He's he's a regular on this, oh, uh, on this camera. Oh, my God. Thing, so, he's just a regular. So awesome. Um, <laughs> I love it. I love it so much. Uh, okay, first of all, how are you? And then tell everybody who is new to understanding you and, and your stream and your community, what is hanging from your neck and what is going on? So, I mean... <laughs> This this little guy right here, this is Kobe. He's only he's actually gonna be a year old next wow. month. Wow. He's not even three pounds, man. So that's the reason why he's able to fit in my hood. Yeah. And uh, there's no sign of it gonna be changing anytime soon, man. Yeah. I'm trying to get him to gain his weight. He just won't. So he just won't, huh? He hangs out in my hood. I uh, he love seems it. to love it. Uh, so anyways, um yeah, no, I I'm D Box, I'm a variety streamer. We do all kinds of stuff, like uh, we do like Pokemon card openings. I got this ready and set to go uh, for my stream today. I love it. Uh, we do like Dead by Daylight. We do, we'll play Fortnite, as you know. We play together. Yep, yep. Um, like we'll play in a little bit of Warzone. Pretty much, you name it, we'll be we'll be doing it. A little bit of everything. Right? Yeah, man. And the community, it's all centered around this little dude right here. That's so awesome. I mean, he, he brings everyone together. We call <laughs> ourselves the Kobe Gang, and yep. I'm wearing my merch right now. Uh, it says Kobe Gang on it. Oh, and, so uh, good. Man. And I, I couldn't be more blessed to have the community that I have. <laughs> man, I, I've amazing. had so much fun getting to know you over the, the last little bit. I know you and I have originally met, I think, on YouTube through PGA golf videos, right? It was Kirsten. It's actually really funny. Kirsten this morning she said, How do you know Kimbro? Yeah. I said, I met him on Instagram. Ah, he, uh, yeah, yeah, he was yeah. doing a PGA Tour 2K series and yep. I saw his post. I found it on my Discover page. Oh, I man. made a comment and it just took off from there. I love it. I love it. Yeah. I, I remember when that initially happened and um, I remember feeling like I don't know if I've ever met another content creator who actually like genuinely watches my PGA stuff and like, can connect with me like a lot of my twitch friends have like a variety of different interests and i have a small group who are actually interested in sports and golf so it was like my my radar was like excited i was like so pumped to talk to another sports you know enthusiast who was into golf and um i mean our relationship our friendship hit it off from there man yeah dude 100 percent. yeah so that's been super fun um i'm super glad that uh that you're willing to come on and hang out with me today um this, this series has been so much fun and I've enjoyed, um, you know, bringing on different content creators and allowing us to have deeper conversations than just why do you like streaming? What got you into this? So hopefully the questions that I've picked out today will, uh, will help us get to know you on a deeper level like that. And then, um, you know, we'll kind of go from there and, and I know you've got a stream later today. So let's, uh, let's get it going. You, are you ready to roll my brother? I'm ready, man. Ready okay. You are. All right. Let's let's uh let's get it going with the first one. And again, chat. You guys can hang out and ask D Box anything ever. But okay, D Box. What was the first album CD that you ever owned? <laughs> you know what? Uh, there's been a few. Um, the one that's really coming to mind, the earliest one I can remember. Yeah. Is probably Get Rich or Die Trying. <laughs> oh no way! A little Fifty yeah, Cent. Dude. Yeah, dude, I was all about that. I was a basketball player growing up. Okay, right? okay. And that's just kind of that's kind of the music that you listen to when you're a basketball player. And uh, that's so <laughs> it's funny. so funny seeing it. It's like if you saw me as a little kid listening <laughs> to like Fifty Cent and all that. Yeah, and you're like, wait, what? Dude, but, yeah, I love. I, mean, I remember. I have vivid memories of that album as well. Um, I remember going like on a on a school trip to Washington D.C. with you know like you know they put you in a bus and at least in the United States. Oftentimes you'll take like a big trip to like the the United States headquarters and see a bunch of the monuments and visit a bunch of the museums and it's always school sponsored so you jump in a big charter bus with all of your classmates and then you drive down or whatever and um, I remember doing that in like seventh or eighth grade and that album had just came out and I just remember listening to it on repeat with all of my my again my sports friends my baseball teammates yeah. my basketball teammates and uh, we just remember wiling out. We didn't even know like half of the words. We didn't understand like most of the <laughs> most of the things that that 50 and, and the rest of the G unit were talking about. But that was definitely a, an album that I got down on as well. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I remember the inside cover. I don't know why the inside cover. When you open it up, that little sleeve on the left hand side, yeah. it had him pointing a gun. And I was like, <laughs> oh, I can't let my mom see this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, I love it. That is so funny. So, so funny. OK, let's keep it moving. Uh, that's a great first answer, though. I love that. 
Um, okay, what was your favorite toy growing up as a kid? Do you have favorite one? Toy. I mean, other than my N64 and stuff, I mean, like action figures. I remember. Man, you're bringing up some nostalgia know, here. Man. I'm really going back. I know, thinking. I know. Did you ever see the movie uh, Small Soldiers? Oh yeah, Tommy yeah. Lee Jones. Yeah, I had I had a couple of those action figures. Did you? I used to, yeah, man, I used to play with those all the time. That's a good movie. I remember that movie, uh, like heavily influencing me. I was always influenced by the films like Chucky, Small Soldier. Like I was terrified as a kid that my inanimate objects would come to life and start messing with me. You know what I mean? There was another yeah. there was another film. I think it was a Disney movie. And it was about it was like I can't remember what it's called. I know Mrs. Kimbrough plays loved it. I'm sure I'm sure Kay loved it too, but uh it was like a Native American and like there was like uh let me see. There it was, it was a bunch of action figures that came to life and there was like it was basically like uh what is that? Chiefs and Indians like where there's like it wasn't you know, Indian in the cupboard, was it? Ah, uh, yes. There was like this was? magic cupboard where you would like put yeah. the little animal or the the action figure in, close the door, and they'd come to life. Yeah. Oh man. I own that on VHS. Do you? <laughs> yes, dude. <laughs> so yeah, back in the day, I was always like essentially terrified of like any of my toys like coming to life. Like I was just always, and it probably didn't help that I started with the Chucky movies. Like had I yeah, did it in a different order, I probably would have felt a little different. But think about it, Toy Story, like all of these things back in the day, uh, our our uh, our favorite toys in our room are, are ready to create havoc and and have battles. It's crazy. I think everybody at some point had a thought in their head of their toy came to life at one point when they were little. You know what I mean? I think I think that's got everyone's gone through <laughs> yeah, that. I think so too. I think so too. Uh, Kay says, "I love that I'm getting to know my fiance through this stream today. I'm glad. <laughs> I'm glad you are too. I uh, that's the goal. The goal is for us to uh, to get to know D Box by the end of all of this a little bit better. Um, shout out, quick shout out to my dad who's in the chat, popping in to show some love. Appreciate you, pops. What's going on? Uh, Mikey Tsunami in the building. My boy D in the building. It's good to have you guys. Uh, we're with D Box." hanging out, asking him 21 questions. So drop him a follow if you wouldn't mind for me. He's a really good friend and uh, we appreciate him very much. Happy Sunday. Let's keep it rolling. Uh, okay, D-Box. This one is a little bit more controversial. This one always stirs up a bunch of drama in, in whenever I ask it. Backstreet okay. Boys or NSYNC? Um, divisive. See, it's a divisive question. See, I guess I'll give you some reasons why, but I guess I'll have to go with Backstreet Boys. Okay, okay. So, I grew up with two sisters. Okay. So, all this stuff, all the boy bands, Hanson, sure. NSYNC, the Moffats, everything like that. Sure. I was, I just inevitably became a fan because I was like, well, I got nothing else to listen to. <laughs> they control right. the... It's the only thing control. I hear in the house. Yeah, dude. Like, if <laughs> for, like, we'd be watching much music and they'd be like, no, we gotta, we gotta listen to like Hanson, Backstreet Boys. And, like, I've seen them in concerts. Sure. And, sure. I mean, that I got. I have to go with Backstreet Boys because I saw them in a concert because my sisters. Backstreet Boys is. So, I mean, you know, it feels like either way you can't go wrong. No, um, dude. It feels like they're both really solid choices, but I, I will say, and I don't even know if this counts. Maybe it's a little bit of recency bias, but I've I've always been and have become such a good, uh, like a like a legitimate fan of Justin Timberlake, and so like I probably. Don't, I can't really remember which one I listen to more of in the moment. I just like always think back and like realize that I'm such a JT fan now that I probably just rock with NSYNC for if I'm being honest with myself. That's but fair. You can't really go wrong with either. They were just both so yeah, incredible. As one. long as you didn't pop out with like 98 degrees or like, no. you know, something something <laughs> off the wall, I, I, no. I can respect your answer either way. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing like that. <laughs> exactly. Um, all right. This one's a little bit uh, a little bit more of going back in the Wayback Machine. And you can keep it as PG as you'd like. Um, but what do you think is the worst lie that you've ever told your parents? Worst lie? Yeah. Oh my gosh. I know, I know. It's 21 questions, man. This is Ooh, this is this is this lie. is a big deal here. I mean. There's definitely been some, but I, oh my God, man, I don't even know. I'm trying to think of like some things that I've, cause like once I got to high school, I remember there was some stuff that I did and like, I got to the point where 
I was so scared yeah. to lie to my mom that I just told her the truth. And she, <laughs> I, 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 oh my God. Yeah. Where's the lie? That's actually hilarious. So I guess, you know what? You know what? My sister. Mm. Yeah. You know what? This is, yeah. Okay. My sister. There's this, okay. When I was really little, I was probably five, six years old. And I still remember this because it went on for years. Mm -hmm. And there was this little bottle of like this medication stuff that was emptied. Like it was like for cold so or uh, cankers in your okay. mouth. Yep. Yep. And I remember so clearly, I was like, it's like five. I remember this. All right. So I took like, uh, like filled it up with toilet paper and water. Okay. And I was like, I was like, mom, can I just like do this? She's like, no, don't do that. Like, just throw it out. And I thought like I'd get in trouble if I did it. So I did it anyway. <laughs> and I hid it under my bed. And for years, my sister like blackmailed me on it. It was no. like, if you don't do this. I'm going to tell mom that you did that to that stuff. Oh, and no. so for years, like I didn't tell my mom. And then when I finally told her, she's like, you've got to be kidding me. Like <laughs> you, you thought I'd get mad at that. But oh, like for man. years, this went on. Sure. And it's such a stupid little thing. Like I was, I was just a little kid. Right. So I thought it'd be a bigger deal than it was. Yeah. But it was oh, massive man. to you back then though. It was huge. Like yeah. my mom said no. And I was like, I'm going to do it anyway. Yeah. Like, I felt like a rebel. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> it's an interesting moment when you, uh, <sighs> when you sort of like, like you said like when you when you pull back that rebel in you for the first time and you kind of push back against your parents or you know in school or something like that um that's actually hilarious and that's a great story do you uh does your sister still give you a hard time about that do you guys talk oh, about we that? still we laugh about it now and like yeah. we'll yeah like today like even a day like today or tomorrow if we were talking we yeah. could bring it up and laugh about it oh man it's something we'll never forget that's awesome i love it so <laughs> i didn't have any siblings growing up i was an only child I am still an only child. Um, but at the same time, I was super close with my cousins and um, I'm sort of like the older brother figure for them. But I definitely, we've got some moments like that where we look back where we were kind of, you know, getting into that rebellious territory of our youth and uh, laugh. Definitely pulled a fast one over on mom and dad once or twice, which was pretty fun. <laughs> okay. It's been a long time, especially with the pandemic, but hypothetically if we were able to go to movie theaters again what is your go-to movie theater popcorn habit what's your routine when we get into the theater the routine yeah okay so usually i gotta go to the washroom first I, you gotta empty it out before you get in the theater okay right? yep that's a so good go call. to the washroom and then we get into line to get our popcorn and ever i i'm good i just i'm good with just plain old popcorn okay. sometimes this is actually this is a question for for you guys. I know we're getting off the, off the off the question, but now I have a question. Yep. Um, does anybody in your chat or you know of barbecue seasoning for popcorn? Barbecue seasoning? No, I know that there's a couple like fine powder specialty seasonings out there, but I don't know that I've ever seen the barbecue one. See, that's mind blowing to me. That's like a regular here. It's like really white cheddar, dill pickle, salt and vinegar, ketchup, barbecue. What? And I was talking to my chat there last week. It was either Thursday or Tuesday. And they're like, what the heck is barbecue seasoning? Yeah. I, like, I mean, barbecue seasoning. I see 12s in the chat. I'm pretty <laughs> sure he was there for it. And like, it's anyways. So I'll either get just plain popcorn or I'll, or I'll get the barbecue seasoning yeah. for it. No butter. And I always get pretzel bites. Wow. Always pretzel bites. Okay. Yes, sir. I, I feel yes, like sir. I'm I'm in the, the same boat as Mikey. Mikey's like ketchup with question marks. Yes. I, that was one the one that threw me off. I was like, who's putting <laughs> ketchup seasoning? On I'll popcorn. tell you, I absolutely, I hate ketchup seasoning. Yeah. I love ketchup. Yeah. But ketchup seasoning, no. It's that and salt and vinegar, like the, the salty kind of taste. Yeah. I'm not about that. Oh, that is wild. Yeah. No, I definitely, yeah. My, is this dude Canadian? Yeah, right. Like, that is, that's interesting. So are these in the theater, like, put yeah, out I for people? I got some in my cupboard. Like, <laughs> Well, I, I mean, the, like, are, is the tackets. theater providing it for you? Or are you taking this with you to the theater when you go? So, yeah, you can you definitely obviously bring your own, but they do sell little packets. Wow. I really would have never guessed that. I I, I, I don't know a lot about Canadian culture, at least on that, <laughs> like, kind of granular level. And I yeah. definitely did not see that coming. But that is an awesome answer. So, okay, so you said you go with the plain stuff, but pretty much, like, you have to do the pretzel bites. Yeah. Always, yeah, yeah. always press the bus. We even make our own here now the theaters have been closed. Really? Yeah, dude, it's That's game That's a good changer. call. I like that. I like that. I will, yeah. I will say, just for the good of the chat in this in this story, um, 
and maybe it'll work in Canada. The problem that I always had and that my dad found a solution to when we were growing up is especially if you get anything and, and it's not even fair sometimes now medium small whatever the the the, the portions are so big that you get at the yeah. theater that after you sort of get your bag from the cashier and you kind of like get yourself settled in and established and you go to the theater and you sit down i don't know 10 20 minutes into the movie into the not even the movie just the previews now your 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 seasoning your salt your whatever you're doing is pretty much gone like it's now in the middle of the bag we're in middle of the bag territory it's only just the popcorn now and it's kind of like a depressing situation you don't want to get up and go back out and redo so my dad he i don't know i remember watching him do this when i was like five or six and i it like always stuck with me at some point he learned that if you take just a leftover napkin that you get just from that little station open it up all the way take whatever salt or seasoning you're going to use pour it in there and then collapse it from the corners into like a little baggie it almost looks like a flag that you'd throw when you're like an nfl referee right mm -hmm. it's got like the pouch in the bottom and it's got all the and then literally you stash that in your pocket so now middle of the theater middle of the movie pull that bad boy out just pull out like one of the corners and it's like a spout and you can re-salt re-season whatever you're doing right in the middle middle of the theater heads up play heads up play yeah so my dad my dad uh, instilled that in me that's a that's a habit a ritual a kimbro ritual that will take forever that'll i'll pass that down to my kids nice. so yeah good one okay staying on the topic of movies d box what is a terrible movie that you actually love right so when i think of this I, universally nobody really likes this movie it's like got bad Ooh. reviews maybe a bad imdb rating rotten tomatoes but you always love it no matter what's going on with you oh i got a couple okay <laughs> all right i'm down i'm down honestly honestly I, it gets so much hate and I, I i get why it gets hate but i genuinely liked i didn't see the new one but the justice league the one from like 2017 oh, okay I, I genuinely liked it okay now now it could be better don't get me wrong i didn't see the new one sure. i could still say the new one's even better but i actually like that one and one that also comes to mind grown-ups oh kevin james adam sandler yes. the whole thing yes as cheesy and corny as that <laughs> you know man, i love it i'm going there with you i'm rocking there with you the first one at least i don't know yes. about the like four that they made after but the first one at least very cheesy very corny but a part a part of me just loved seeing all those guys together on screen and it yeah, the it antics of it were pretty goofy and pretty fun i agree 100%. that's that's a good one that's a good one um okay so for me and i don't know if you guys ever even like got down with this but back in the day there's a movie called blue streak have you ever heard of blue streak yep oh my god dude blue streak literally just like yesterday so i told chad earlier Rita and I are moving and we were going through our bookshelf yesterday on a, you know, kind of lazy Saturday at home just starting to figure out which books we want to keep, which ones we want to donate, old textbooks from school, whatever. We're going through this thing and we've got some DVDs stashed in there and she's going through the DVDs, Blu-rays and like chucking stuff and like looking at it and she looks up and she's like, what's a blue streak? Cause this, this feels like a donate. And I was like, honey, that's Martin Lawrence, right? Yes. And, yes. Okay. And Dave Chappelle. I was like, honey, if you throw that out, we have to get divorced instantly. <laughs> I love that movie so much. I can't even believe we got married without you seeing it. Um, it is like, I looked it up recently and I think the IMDB is like under five for it. Like it is not well liked by most people, but I don't know. Maybe I just watched it at a funny moment in my youth, but I, that movie just always stuck with me. I remember quoting it with my boys. I will, I will always go down with my, my, my boys in blue straight. Great movie. Great movie. Um, I appreciate this D box. Joe, uh, our boy J Payne hit us with a nine month sub. That is nutty. J Payne. Thank you for the love and support, buddy. I appreciate you so much. Sneeries in the building. That's a good cat right there. I know. Yes. <laughs> Kobe, uh, Kobe is a legend and a G and we appreciate him hanging out early and on a Sunday morning as well. Um, <laughs> Looks out of it. I know. Uh, D box. Did you name your first car? No, I've never named a car. That's my boy. I haven't either. Never. I haven't Kirsten, either. Kirsten has like a name for every car. Her mom has a name for the cars. Wow. I'm like I, I don't. I just. I don't know. I don't know what it was either. I my I guess. Did, well, let me ask you this. Did anybody in your family name their cars? No. 
Etsy. I think it's like an inherited learned experience through your family. And my parents didn't, my dad didn't. So I, I just like, it was never on the forefront of my mind to even think about ever. Yeah, it's true. I, yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, it just wasn't in our family. So, but I'm curious because a lot of people do it. Rita names her cars. Rita always did. So, hmm. um, it's kind of it's kind of goofy. It's like a. It, it's funny how it's not something that I think you just usually like. You're the first one in your family to do it. You either kind of right. like you guys do it or you don't do it. It's, I don't know right. that there's anybody who's in between. So that's why I kind of had it on here. It's an interesting question. Um, oh, absolutely. Okay. What is a horrible fashion trend that you secretly like? Horrible fashion trend. Dude, I'm like not like my fashion, dude, is like gym clothes. <laughs> so I don't know if I'm the right person to ask about fashion. Yeah, yeah. Um, a horrible it fashion could, it, could, it doesn't have to be for guys or for you. It could be just like in general. It could be for other people. That's a tough one, man. I, know. I don't really know much about fashion. Um, horrible fashion trend. I mean, I guess... I, like growing up i used to hate it i'm not talking like super short but like the shorts that are getting like a little shorter yeah i don't i'm not talking you know i'm, I'm talking like just barely above the knees i'm talking okay. those shorter shorts okay um i used to, like i was a basketball player yeah and obviously back in the early 2000s <laughs> growing up playing basketball you're wearing basketball shorts like below the they're, knees they're, like, going they're going to your ankles they're going low they're going and, to your uh, ankles yeah and like now like i don't know where i'm getting older and like the style's kind of changing it's uh it's like the new trend where guys are wearing shorter yeah and i i'm kind of with it yeah that's a great answer <laughs> i mean like it's it's kind of funny how it's gone back and forth because it just literally just keeps cycling between the two but i definitely catch myself like i catch myself gravitating towards some of that stuff because I grew up playing basketball and was influenced by hip hop like you. And then all of a sudden I find myself like wearing like <laughs> Mikey saying chubbies. Yeah. Like really yeah. short, like, you know, shorter shorts at least, or like, you know, gym shorts that aren't like my baggy basketball gym shorts, but like they fit properly. I would even consider like those are, those are the move now. And uh, I don't know. I'm a big fan. I'm a big fan. I'm not going to lie. I'm kind of with it. I'm kind of with Great it. Great golfing shorts. So. Great golfing shorts. Absolutely. Uh, D box. What is your least favorite sport to watch? Oh, soccer. Ooh, interesting. Hot take <laughs> on soccer. Real quick. Yeah. Not yeah, a fan. No. Can't no. get down with soccer. No. What is it Football, about soccer? Whatever. Whatever you. Whatever you call it. No. <laughs> yeah. Whatever you name it. <laughs> what is it about uh, about soccer that I, you you can't rock with? Dude, I just, I can't. I'm so sorry. If, if, if there's any big football slash soccer fans, I'm sorry. I can't do it. Just it's can't. boring, man. Like, I'm sure if you play it and you understand the sport, it's the same with NASCAR. Like, okay. I can't watch it, but like, I, I respect the fact that if you understand it, then you, you appreciate it more. Same with golf. Yeah. Like, you ask half the population, people that don't play it are like, that's the worst sport ever. But if you play it and you understand, like, what's at stake and how to like what's going on sure you appreciate it so much more no matter absolutely. how slow and quiet it is absolutely so well it's the same as like and and i think universally like basketball is pretty well liked but i know that you as a as a lifelong basketball fan i know myself in the same way like you can watch basketball and appreciate it and appreciate the athleticism but there's something like someone who sets a backdoor screen or a really well executed give and go like the nuance within the sport like you said can make you feel so much more connected and be so much more appreciative i'm laughing jay Payne, uh my boy uh he just subscribed for nine months i rock with jay Payne. he's been a, a friend for a very long time he's a huge soccer fan he, he's oh, a sorry. Huge, not a, but not just a <laughs> fan like he he's played soccer at pretty high competitive levels for a long time and i know his heart is uh is broken at the moment but <laughs> i i do i would argue i don't know what it is about where i live and i live in a city in columbus ohio where there's a professional soccer team that just won the united states soccer championship like the super bowl of soccer in the u.s we just won it last year and still people in columbus are like meh <laughs> It's really weird. Like, I'm not personally that way because I, I I was a huge fan growing up. I played youth soccer growing up. And then because the crew started their, like, franchise around the time that I was, like, six, seven, eight, I was, like, heavily influenced by them. Now, I'm not the biggest soccer fan in the world, but right. I definitely can appreciate it and I watch it sometimes. But, yeah, there's a bunch of my friends, especially from college, who are like, dude, I can't get down to soccer. I can't do it. See, well, I guess... <laughs> 
we we just got a soccer team last summer. Okay. Or two summers ago. Hey, I can't remember because of the whole COVID thing. Sure. I, I, they might have been their first year last year, but they couldn't finish it. Okay. And that's something I would go like on a nice summer day. It's an outdoor stadium. Yeah. I would 100% go and watch that game live. Yeah. If it was televised on TV, no shot. No shot. That on. <laughs> no <laughs> shot. No shot, huh? I understand. I understand. Uh, Shadow of Death is in the building. It's good to see you. Happy Sunday. Lady is still here hanging out. Says Sam. Soccer is boring. Um, Orb is in the building. Good morning, my friend. I know Orb plays a lot of youth soccer. He's pretty good. He's uh, he's out in Cali. I know he's doing things as a young gun. Good for him. Um, Jay Payne says A, but I see he plays Apex. Yes, D Box is is an Apex fan. So you can that Jay Jay Payne. Um, he he pretty much mains Apex. So um, you guys you guys can still be friends even though the soccer is not your thing. Um, I would say in general soccer isn't big in Canada. I I would assume that. Yeah. I, what would you say is your bigger national sport? Like. I know Canadian football is getting bigger, but it's got to still be hockey as number one, right? Oh yeah, actually basketball num- too. The uh, the the national sport of Canada is actually lacrosse. I don't know if you knew that. Is it really? Mm-hmm. I did not know that. Mm-hmm. Wow, was it was it developed in Canada? I don't know. That's interesting. Uh, anytime anyone asks, like, what's your national sport? Like, think hockey? Yeah. I'm I'm googling it right now to confirm, so I yeah. don't sound like a Canadian <laughs> national <laughs> sport. <laughs> That's, lacrosse, yeah, yeah, it's lacrosse. That's so interesting. I would just, I just assume that like northern states and like northern countries, you can only do soccer for like a sm- or lacrosse for like a small like part of the year, so it wouldn't be as big. But I guess not. That's interesting. Yeah, man. That's a good trivia question. I would have never guessed. <laughs> I would have never guessed. Um, there you go. Mikey says, I would say American soccer is boring or kind of whack, but Premier League and UEFA is much better. That is true. I I know the soccer that we get a chance to watch here in the United States relative to what happens in the rest of the world is really like a minor league team. Like, it's really like uh, two or three steps below um, what they have in Europe and and over uh, overseas. So, um, as Amy says, I'm a UK girl and soccer is big for me. Huge soccer fan. Yeah, I know. And it helps when you guys get a better product. It's probably easier to watch. The United States soccer situation isn't very good. As a matter of fact, I just found out like a couple months ago, the U.S. failed to qualify for the Olympics mm. in soccer, in men's soccer. That. Like, what in the hell are we doing? How are we not able to put together enough athletes who play soccer to make the Olympic team? I don't understand. Um, our girl uh, Livy's in the building. We love you, Moist and Loin. You rock. I hope. Uh, uh, shout out to Liv. Not only is she a mod and a dear friend of mine, she uh, she should have and could have walked yesterday in her master's um, like graduation ceremony. She chose not to, but we love you and we're proud of you, Liv. Happy Sunday. Thank you for stopping in. Uh, Nip says, I'm a huge hockey fan. Go Leafs. That's right. Nick is Can- Nip is Canadian. That's right. I'm a Leafs fan too. Up in up in Canada. U.S. women's soccer is always good. That's true. They are usually really, really good. Um, they hold it down for us. The, the men's side, struggling <laughs> hard. Struggling hard. Um, I appreciate you guys stopping in. Love you. We're doing 21 questions with D-Box. Be sure to drop him a follow for me over there on, uh, on Twitch. Um, he's also huge on TikTok. He does a lot of great things with the cat hood kitty on TikTok. So don't sleep on his TikTok as well. Please. Like Kobe is. Kobe, Kobe, <laughs> Kobe's legit over there on, on TikTok. He's sleeping. All right, D-Box. Um, we're going to transition away from like youth experience, memories. We're at that like we're, we're on question 12. So we're kind of going to move forward, progress a little bit up. What is one thing that you quote, I wish I had started doing this earlier in my life? What is that? What is that one thing that uh, that kind of sticks with you? So, oh, so wait, what, what? Sorry, what was it? So like, is do you have one thing that you think is like, in air quotes? I wish I started doing this earlier in my life. That you look back and you regret that you are doing it now, but you should have started it sooner, and you just are like regretful or you know frustrated you didn't do it faster. Caring what people think, man. Ooh. Seriously. Okay. Like, that's that's one thing especially the answer. early 20s man yeah like no matter what i did whether it was like posts and stuff on instagram i'd like ask people like is this like does this look cool like is this okay yeah and, like i cared like if people like i looked at how many likes i got and sure. now like when i'm when i'm posting on a tiktok like i had a, a video blow up on 
last sometime last week had a hundred thousand views. Love uh, it's it. at over a hundred thousand. Yeah. When I made that video, I was completely uninspired. Yeah. I was sitting at work and I was like, let's just throw a video together. I haven't sure. posted since the beginning of April. And so I threw it together and I posted it. I was like, it is what it is. Whatever happens, happens. Like sure. that's the point of where I like I'm at. I just don't care if people like it, they don't like it. It's yeah. just there. Just if you like be it, up. great. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And then it had over a hundred thousand views, and now I'm like, oh god, like <laughs> You so know, now I'm like almost trying too hard, but yeah, anyways. that's so funny. No, it's a great, like, it really is a, it's a great example that you've described, but it's also like a really key important thing that hopefully everybody starts to develop as we go along. Like mm-hmm. having the ability to go through a maturation process as we get older and not be so caught up on everybody else's opinions of you or what they think, like the anxiety of it. And I know our girl Moist and Loin would, would definitely appreciate this. Rita and I talk about it a lot, you know, sort of unpacking and unlocking sort of those emotions and being so wrapped up in what are people thinking of this? Do I look okay? Is this post all right? We live in this weird social media world and it's really hard to separate from that. And um, I'm glad you're starting to get there. I, I, I am glad. I'm happy for you. It's got to feel liberating. Oh, hundred percent, man. And it's like you said, it's part of the maturation process. And like the older you get, the more you realize like it just, who cares? Yeah. It doesn't matter. Yeah. doesn't yeah. even matter. No. Um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm dying. Uh, Dre Codis says, uh, sorry, I'm late to the stream. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome in Dre. Uh, oh, Dracotis. Dracotis. Is that how we say it? Good guy. Good guy. That's, that's what I say. <laughs> Dracotis. I appreciate you. Dracotis. Welcome in. Um, perspiring orb wanted to know what was in your jacket. That's a cat. That's definitely a cat in your hood. Um, Yo. That, that is the star of the show. Look at him popping his head up, saying what's up. <laughs> chilling, chilling, chilling. Um, okay, if there were no limits, D-Box, what's a place that you would want to spend the rest of your life, like geographically? Oh, somewhere warm, man. Somewhere warm. Somewhere that's just the sunshine. Yeah. Like, I don't care if that's Florida, California. Somewhere warm, man. Somewhere <laughs> I hate the winter. I was going to say, I hate it. you guys are up in Canada. Are you, You're on a coast too, right? Yes, East do, Coast. Do the do the summers in Canada get warm enough for you to guys kind of enjoy sort of oh, beach like we'll, stuff? We can get like in the summers, it's anywhere between so I guess we're gonna have to do some math here. Yeah. But it's anywhere between twenty to thirty degrees Celsius. Celsius. Okay. And so I think I don't know the math, you like multiply you div- multiply by th- I don't know, man. I used to know add ten <laughs> multiply by something. I don't know. Anyways. Let's see. Let's just see like 30 degrees in Fahrenheit in Fahrenheit. So the warmest it'll get here, 86. Yeah. And then. So it's anywhere from 68 to 86. So oh, it's nothing okay. crazy hot. Yeah. Like it's it's enough to be able to go out for a walk or Absolutely. exactly go to the beach. And, yeah. yeah man. No, that, no, that's we, actually we really summers. nice weather. Yeah. It, do, it doesn't sound like it gets too hot at all. The weird part about where we live in the Midwest, you get because it's so flat you 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 don't get the cover of like some of the mountains or some Mm. of the like peaks and valleys so in certain parts like especially where we live in columbus like you get everything like literally it'll be 30 degrees fahrenheit one day and then like that afternoon it'll be all the way up into the 80s like Mm. you'll just have these huge sweeping shifts although i do tell rita the only thing i do love like we we're not at big risk of like an earthquake, a, a hurricane, uh, a tsunami. Like we get a little bit of tornado alley, but by the time it kind of moves east through the United States, it sort of fizzles out. So like mm-hmm. from a natural disaster perspective, knocking on wood, cl- like Columbus is, is, is pretty solid. So as much as we bitch and moan about like the weather that we get here and how erratic it is, we're also probably not going to be taken out by it like a lot of other people yeah. we know in the United States at least. So I- I'm all for that. I- I'll give Ohio a break for that. Um, <laughs> Livy says uh, sh- that's how she is on TikTok now. She just posts for fun, not for the views, though I do love when I get a lot, of course. Love of course. It. But yeah, um, Liv, you definitely need to holler at D-Box on uh, TikTok and see what he's got going on. He does a great job over there for sure. Um Dracotis, thank you for the follow too, by the way. Uh, I appreciate you guys. Okay. Uh, D-Box, who is the most interesting person in your extended family? Most interesting person? Yeah. Ooh. Post-COVID, you're getting together for a holiday, and you're, you and you and Chris are going 
driving there and you're like, man, this person is going to be wiling out at this. This this person's going to have a crazy story. You got anybody in the family like that? I'll be honest, man. I have a very, very tight, small family. Okay. Like we, I have extended family, but like for the people that I spend my time with and day in, day out, it's honestly just my mom, stepdad, my two sisters, my sister's husband, and their three kids. Okay. And obviously Kirsten. Yeah. But like when it comes to family, man, that's that's our family. You right guys there. keep it tight right there. Yeah, we just vibe all together. Any uh, any interesting stories out of them? Any you know a job or a career that they're involved in? Anything crazy? You guys just keep it pretty um, normal. Honestly, yeah, it's pretty pretty low key. My brother in law is in the Navy, so he's always okay. traveling everywhere across the world. Yeah. Um, I got like he's giving me all kinds of stuff from like the military. Like I got like this coin from him last oh, year. Oh no way, that's cool. Like the ship that he's on. Yeah. Like, so I'll get like little, little cool stuff like that. Yeah. Um, but uh, other than that, no, like my mom, my stepdad, they're all retired. I mean, we're getting older, man. <laughs> that's awesome. I love that. Yeah, man, I feel that. We don't really have anything crazy like that either. That's actually true. I. When I think about my extended family, like I don't really have anything that's like super, super noteworthy. Back in the day, my grandfather was a pro golfer and has been an instructor for a long time. So no way. that's pretty fun. Like he never that's was sick. he never was on the PGA tour, but he definitely um, trained and, 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 you know, was the swing coach for a lot of people. And um, he uh, back at, when he was in high school. I think he was a high school senior, but Jack Nicholas was like a sophomore or a freshman and he beat Jack like in the state championships or something. Like he's he's in the, the golf hall of fame as being one of the people who like beat Jack Nicholas back in the day. But at the same time it's like Jack was only like a freshman, so he wasn't even had if you guys would have met his seniors together, he probably would have got smoked. But just like Dude, stuff sick, like that, though. which is pretty fun. So yeah. That's super cool. Yeah, he and uh, I uh What's, I always crack up because I'll tell people that and they'll be like, oh my God, you got lessons from him when you were younger. You must be amazing <laughs> at golf. And I'm like, yeah, I mean, I have a decent golf swing, but uh, we're not blood related. So I didn't inherit any of the skills. I just kind of got taught by him. So uh, that's that's how I get out of my, my horrible golf scores, despite having uh, that as my grandfather. Um, wow. <laughs> all right, D-Box, if you could have one last meal what are you going to choose to eat? Oh, man, people. Oh, man. I get this question all the time. Do you? It depends on the day, my man. Sure. <laughs> How you're feeling? Uh, I love the classics, you know, like pizza. Of course. Um, or sushi, man. Yeah. Sushi. Ooh, but for my birthday dinner. So on Friday, um, Kirsten was like. That's right. Was, happy, I, I actually, happy belated. Thanks, brother. Um, but we got we got pizza. Okay. Now, now here's another learning learning thing for you guys, too. Yeah. I got don't hair pizza. What is that? Exactly. What? Exactly. <laughs> it what? is. What? It is like so a don't hair. It's something from um, the Middle East, okay. and it was something that was brought over here. So it's specifically even in Canada, it's specifically known in Halifax. So if I was to ask somebody in like Alberta or British Columbia, they'd be like, "What the heck is a don't hair?" Yeah. So, anyways. It's, a, it's basically like a wrap. Some people think it's like a gyro, but it's not. Okay. So it's like a wrap that has um, tomato, onion, and some sort of meat in it. Now, a real donair has mm. lamb, okay. but the ones that we right. eat here are just beef. Like it's just, sure. um, I don't know how to explain it. It's on like a skewer that they like kind of shave down the meat. Okay. And uh, so it's basically those three ingredients with donair sauce, which is the absolute key. Really? So do donair sauce, Kirsten can make some homemade too. It's literally uh, sweetened condensed milk with a little bit of vinegar. And I think that might be it, but like I, I know restaurants add like a bunch of sugar to it. Sure. But it is amazing. It's the bomb, huh? It is amazing. I'm going to have to so ask Rita about that. I don't know if she knows about that. I don't. I honestly, I'd be shocked. Yeah. Unless, unless you're Don't from air. here or you came from like Lebanon or something. Sure. Chances are you probably haven't heard of a donair, <laughs> but it's huge here. Like, okay. Yeah. It's like actually, I think it's like the national food of Halifax. No way. That's really interesting. She's such a huge sauce girl, so she'd be down. So uh, I'll have to ask and see what she, what she, if she's yeah. familiar with it or not. Livy, have you ever heard of that? I don't think you have. I, I know the, I have. It's Halifax's official food. Okay. Halifax's official food. That's good to know. We're gonna have to see where we can uh, get our hands on some. I wonder if you can order it on, like, order it and have it like shipped to you at all. 
or do you have to be like in that part of the country in order to like honestly, stop in somewhere more than, like grocery stores here so <laughs> yeah maybe interesting all right dbox if you had to teach a class right you're 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 being asked to, i don't know if you're at a school or what but you're you're teaching a class what is one thing that people would ask you to teach gym <laughs> gym i love it uh, yeah i feel that i feel that. i'm not kidding man honestly uh like of the subject i did really well in sure I remember i did really well in like a geology class in high school yeah like I, I that was like one of my only a's okay but like when it comes to like science math and stuff like that history oh my goodness no shot dude no no nothing. shot i could i still need to learn let alone teach it <laughs> <laughs> that's that's I, fair i i feel like gym class would probably be my answer too if i if you really had to ask like I don't know. We'll see. Any I'm of the other traditional the subjects. Sure. Like, I love finding new activities. And you were an athlete like, growing up. Yeah, exactly. That and actually, sense. I was co I coached basketball. So, like, okay. to have like, kids, like, teaching them how to, like, stay active, like, sure. teaching basic skills of sports, stuff like that. Yeah, very um, familiar with it. Exactly. That makes exactly. sense. Do you have uh, Do you have basketball coaching in your uh, in your future at all? Um, Any well, passion actually, to get back coaching, into it? I was coaching my nephew's team. So, they was it was eight under. So, I mean, it was more so babysitting. <laughs> I was going to say, it is, that is controlled chaos. Um, it was fun, though. Yeah. Uh, this year is a little tougher. They asked us to do it again. Some of the parents even asked if Kirsten and I could coach again. Okay. But, like, with everything going on, uh, parents aren't even allowed at the games. And, like, just the restrictions of what we'd have to keep in place with all these uh, nine-year-olds this year. Sure. It's like, you know what? Let's just take this year off. Yeah. It was, a, like, we're busy as it is. And that sure. was even, like, so on Tuesdays, I used to work. So, I worked 730 to 4. So, on, like, on a typical Tuesday. I'd work 7.30 to 4, and then we'd coach from 6 oh. to 7.30, and then I'd stream at 8. Oh, my God. That was so, an like, exhausting day. It was it was not something that I was able to maintain for a long time. Sure. And once it once it ended, it was almost like, oh, thank goodness. <laughs> right, exactly. Right. But, like, it's definitely not off off the radar off, to ever do yeah. it again. Yeah, I feel that. That would be super fun. I actually coached a little bit of basketball back in the day, too, early, mid-college. And, um, you know, those... those uh, those youngins, they'll they'll keep you they'll keep you feeling young. I mean, they oh, yeah. they will they will take the energy from you and then, you know, give you all kinds of crazy things and the funny what is it? There used to be a show in the United States, kids say the darndest things. Like yep. they will definitely keep you guessing and catch you off guard. So that's actually oh, really, really yeah. fun. Um, oh yeah, they do. All right, D, who amongst the people in your life would you say brings the best out of you? Kirsten. The uh, the significant other, the fiance, Kirsten. the fiance. You guys are getting married soon, right? Or what's oh, where are we at in the saga? Kimbro, Kimbro, Kimbro. I know you guys had some drama with the venue. My friend, my friend. Uh oh, we so, were supposed to be time? married. We were supposed to be married last May seventeenth. Our one year wedding anniversary was supposed to be next month. Wow. Okay. We rescheduled it to August. Okay. And we still couldn't do it because of the restrictions. Sure. So we said, you know what? screw it let's do it next year we're doing it june 5th okay and what do they do last week they shut down the entire province no i know i and, knew canada was was going through it but i didn't realize you guys were going through it like that the, well nova scotia is man nova scotia we, just, is. we shut we shut it right down man uh, so what's the move now you guys are just in another wait and see pattern i mean we're almost coming up here to a month out yeah. and we're gonna have to make a choice on what we want because right now we can only have five people jeez standing in, or in the wedding and they can only be from our community and kirsten's mom lives an hour and a half away so her mom yeah, can't even get here so it's like be... okay that's not no something that can yeah. be done yeah that's got no that's that's a difficult call like it's one thing to have a small wedding like we did but like we had i think 14 including us total but at the same time like her parents came from cleveland two hours mm -hmm. away if mm -hmm. they wouldn't have been able to come we wouldn't have done it so i understand right. oh yeah. man Golly. Well, keep us yeah. posted. Hopefully everything gets better for you guys up there. That is incredibly frustrating. Um, that sucks. And uh, are, well, are, is the are venues working with you guys up there to, to like sort of, you know, they've been good. Understand? They've been good for, yeah, they've been good for moving dates okay. uh, with us. Um, it's been That's tough good. where we can move the venue, but then it's like, well, we have to reschedule like her makeup artist. Sure. Um, we have to reschedule the photographer, the DJ, all sure. that stuff. Sure. But actually, go, leading, I don't know if you knew this, but leading up into this, even before the, these restrictions were put in place, we were told we were allowed to either drink 
or have a DJ Jeez. or dance. Yeah. So you can't you can't drink and have a DJ. You can either dance or drink. Mm. We're like, well, why why are we paying for a bar and a DJ? Yeah. Why would we do <laughs> right? that? Yeah. So man, it's just like the restrictions we have up here, it's so confusing. Sure. And at this point, like I said, right now we're just shut right down. So. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, hang in there, man. We'll uh, we'll all be sending you guys good vibes and, and hoping you guys can get that squared away. You know, like I said, we we went through similar things where you know things were shut down. We had the flexibility and, and caught like a window of time where columbus was allowing you to do really private small things so we snuck our little ceremony in but i definitely know the feeling i know liv knows the feeling she had to do some crazy things she got married last summer and her and her husband had to do some stuff the moist and loin so yeah i mean hang in there uh tell kirsten we're we're sorry hang in there she's still gonna be a beautiful bride don't worry about it it just might come a little bit after when we thought so appreciate that man yeah man of course um name one thing that is still on your bucket list d uh get to the west coast man Ooh, west coast of canada or west coast of the united states um honestly for some reason i just want to get to california and just get to the pacific ocean just chill out i want to i want to i want to see the pacific ocean okay i like that i mean any any trip i've ever gone to it's been like i've been to miami three years ago yeah um i've i've been to boston several times and i've been on the east coast a bunch yeah 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 and like i've gone to calgary here in canada like that's the furthest west i've gone up here sure um, but yeah, like to get to the West coast and specifically, like I said, like get to the Pacific ocean, just, just to say I've been there. Yeah, of course. Yeah. It's beautiful. I've not spent a ton of time, but I have been to California and it, I mean, it is, uh, in certain parts. I mean, obviously there's trouble everywhere, but for the most part, there's just a certain energy and relaxed feel and inner like vibe about the place. Mm -hmm. That is, uh, plus the weather, man, it is a, a difficult one, two punch to beat. That is for sure. Yeah, that is for sure. I hope you guys get a chance to go, which is funny because I would say on my list, our bucket list item is to actually get up to Canada. We're trying to go to Toronto and visit or, you know, to see if we can can uh, split up a trip. Uh, we've got some family like in the upper west part of Michigan. So we'd like leave oh, Ohio, okay. see them and then find our way into Canada and hang out a little bit in Toronto. That's that would be our bucket list. So we'll just we'll trade you. We'll just swap. Uh, we'll swap plane <laughs> tickets or something. <laughs> Sounds good to me, man. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> Um, all right, D-Box, I got, I got a couple more for you. And then I know you guys have your own thing going on in your community today. So I don't want to hold you up too long. No well, worries, what's no worries, something man. that people that like in general that people are afraid of, but it doesn't scare you at all? Oh, man. Oh, it doesn't scare me at all. Yeah. Clowns. Oh, that's a good I one. I guess like I'm trying to think of like the yeah, basics. And, that's like, a good one. Like, I hate spiders and I was trying to think like snakes. I'm like, I'm not scared of snakes, but like, don't I'm not like comfortable them. with them. Yeah, me either. <laughs> but then I'm like, clowns, that's another really common like, yeah. fear that people have. I, I don't, I get nothing from that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, that's a great one. I actually am not afraid of clowns either. I like, I know that there was a lot happening in the last couple of years with the It movie coming out and the It sequel. Oh, I love that movie. A lot of people are afraid of clowns. I don't, I'm chilling. It's weird. Like, I'm not a big scary movie buff at all Oof. like i wouldn't i wouldn't consider myself a fan of scary movies I, like i'll get down with a thriller like a psychological thriller but i'm not necessarily like into like a jump scare film okay. i don't i don't rock with paranormal stuff like oh, i'm not afraid of like freddy or jason if i can punch you if i can like <laughs> physically like harm you i'm we're, we're fine i'm not afraid of you but something like some ghosts or some like weird spirits, demons, dude. No shot. Yeah, man. If you if you can square up with it. Yeah, yeah exactly. I, if I can if I can pull a trigger or I can like <laughs> swing a bat at you, I feel sufficient with my golf swing or my baseball swing. <laughs> like I'm, I'll be okay. But you know, I if, if you're like some weird floating spirit thing, no, dude, I'm not down. I'm not down dude, at all. I got like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You know those like Funko Pops? Yeah. Those things that be yeah, I, I I haven't bought those in like years, but I got eight of the eight of the Pennywise here sitting on my desk. Oh my god. Like I'm all so about funny. it. Man. You you're you are all about it. That is so yeah, funny. Dude. That is so <laughs> funny. Okay. Um this is this is one of my favorite questions because I I'm always curious how people process it. Um so you have a cell phone and yeah. that phone has internet for five years into the future. You're not physically time traveling, but the the internet access that the phone has does have access to the future. What's the first thing you're gonna look up and why? Oh my gosh. <laughs> Man. Um, 
dude. I don't even like I'm trying to think like I guess I'd want to know stuff about myself, but like that wouldn't necessarily be on the internet, you know what I mean? Okay, okay. Um I guess like like I'm trying like we're, we're I mean you and I are streamers. I guess I would look up to see how the stream's doing. Ooh, interesting. I've never gotten that answer before. I like, like that. I like that. Other than that, man, like I don't want to know too too much cuz like that's the whole mystery of life. Sure. Sure. You, you don't want to so, uh, don't want to like spoil too much of it. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'll probably look up like future NFL, NBA, MLB <laughs> like champions, but sure, like sure. other than that, man, I, there's really not much that I All right. Yeah. You would want to know a little bit about yourself. I, I've, I've heard from people that they would want to Google themselves, but like, they would, like, what if you found out that something happened to you? Something not good. Exactly. I don't want to know that. Yeah, that'd be tough. That'd be yeah. really tough. I don't want to know that, right? So if I if I knew something bad happened to me in three years, it's almost like, okay, well, that's what I'm going to think about for three years. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Mikey, right? Mikey Tsunami says, uh, lottery numbers solid yeah i know that's that that's like obviously like one of the first ones i thought of but then it's like mm. yeah I you mean, know i feel like that's going to be you know the usual answer of, sure sure i mean and you can answer it however you want but like the very first thing like lottery numbers is it like it's in the list but is it going to be mm -hmm. the very first thing you do no no that's interesting yeah that's a good one i i definitely feel like I don't know. I, I want to say it would be easy for me to look up myself and, uh, you know, be able to live with the answers one way or the other. But I don't know. I don't know if I could actually. I'm not really sure. Well, it's, it's a tough one. That's why I like asking it. It's, it's yeah, a, no, that's a tough question. It's an seriously. interesting one to think about. Okay, I'm adding a bonus question in here because I'm looking at my list and I like one additional one. Uh, yeah. This is the second to last question I have. So, what is your favorite meal? Breakfast, lunch, dinner. What, what do you what like i would say like breakfast lunch not like what's your favorite meal of them but yeah like you know what i mean like are you a breakfast guy are you a dinner guy no dinner dinner yep go to dinner huh yeah just like a big like a big meal like uh, the, the types usually, of that is... meals you guys have what do you think i mean yeah so i guess we're more apt to like experiment with dinners whereas mm. breakfast it's like okay like this morning we just had a egg breakfast sandwich it yeah. is what it is yeah um lunch maybe it's like something left over or like just like a sandwich or something i don't know just whatever we'll just sure. eat it because we're, we're hungry sure. but dinner like we'll make like well she'll well, mostly kirsten yeah. <laughs> she'll make like shrimp alfredo um <laughs> we, we we got all kinds of stuff here man that she just always experiments with like chicken and all yeah. that so it's it's always something different i like so it. it's yeah that that makes sense that definitely makes sense and it sounds like kirsten is uh a bit of a, a of a savant like a chef did she go to school for that no dude just like a passion <laughs> for being in the kitchen and whipping stuff up I she's just good at it she's just good at it. A she it. just is good at it it just comes to her i can appreciate <laughs> yeah, it i can appreciate it that makes sense i definitely know i'm a breakfast guy like i'm a huge breakfast the foods that come in breakfast I'm a bigger fan of than any other of them. But that being said, like breakfast or dinner is my yeah. little, that's my little uh, workaround. I'm a big breakfast for dinner guy. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. For sure. Uh, Livy said uh, clowns 2020 in 2016, not a fan. There was one on my college campus and all of my sorority sisters, I went out to find him and the police officer stopped because it was dangerous. Yeah, no, thank you. I remember that. Yeah, I do too. I do the too. The 2016 clowns. Yeah, those were not good. No. That was, that was dangerous stuff. Okay, yeah. my last question, D-Box, and we'll, uh, we'll let you go here, brother. It's my favorite question Thanks to ask. So it's always my final question whenever I have people on. Which of your friends or your family are you the most proud of and why? Friends or family that I'm most proud of. Yeah. This is your chance to to wax poetically about somebody in your life that you really care about. Okay, okay. Um, honestly, I, I, like this is this is getting like pretty deep right now for me. But yeah. my mom, man. Yeah. I'm so proud of my mom. I love it. Uh, she uh, she had three kids. I was four years old, I think. My oldest sister was would have been eight, or okay. no, she would have been she would have been she would have been seven. My oldest would have been nine. Okay. And she just she had three kids on her own, and she had to do it all by herself. Yeah. And the way that me and my sisters ended up, man, um, it could have 
could have taken a turn, especially, you know, having a single mom working full time. Yeah. Um, single, you know, had no one really help her other than her her parents. Yeah. And uh, my grandparents. And uh, the way we ended up, I mean, I'm I I thank my mom all the time for it. Yeah. Kudos to mom for that. Yeah, dude. That's awesome, man. Uh, are you guys physically close to her? Do you guys spend a lot of time yeah. with her? Nice. Yeah. So actually, I was on vacation all last week, and she she would text me, and uh, she'd say, "Do you want to come over for lunch?" And one day I was like, "Oh no, don't worry about it, mom." And she's like, "Oh, I bought like some fresh some fresh buns if you want to come make a sandwich." Yeah. And I was like, "Okay, I can't turn that down. How yeah. can you say no to that?" <laughs> yeah. Right? Exactly. And I just I got to a point, man, where I was like, you know what? I'm gonna miss the days if I ever get a, I'm of like not getting texts from my mom. Sure you know down sure. the road so you uh, the older you get the more you realize you know like take advantage of these opportunities that you have absolutely man that is that is really important advice that everyone should heed i really uh especially with mother's day coming up um, yeah, dude. i definitely feel the same way we've we've kind of been going through the same thing rita and i are both only children um my parents turned 60 later this summer and her parents um are older than that even and she's younger than me so there's an even bigger age gap for them and as we get uh as we get older and we've recently in the last month helped my parents move both my grandfather and my my grandmother and step grandfather into like single independent living situations it's, i don't want to call it a nursing home because it's almost mm -hmm. more like an old it's like an old person apartment complex more than it is a nursing home and yeah. um, just kind of watching time go by and watching people age has been really difficult for us and it's made mm -hmm. us both think a lot especially as we get out of the pandemic we're both vaccinated we're trying to we're trying to be around our people uh, quite a bit and i definitely understand how you feel about your mom for sure mm -hmm. yeah i mean yeah, dude. i appreciate that uh dracota says huge shout out to single parents my dad raised my brother and i by himself um i i they're they're superheroes man they really are Absolutely. single parents are uh uh un one of a kind, one of a kind for sure. Um, yo, D box, that is all I have. I appreciate you, man. This was super fun. Uh, I hope you enjoyed hanging out with us today. I definitely enjoyed getting to know you a little better. I had an absolute blast, man. Yeah, Thank man. you so much for inviting me to do this with you. Yeah. I've always wanted to since I've known <laughs> you. I've seen the segments. I'm like, yeah, it'd oh, be so cool to do that someday. Yeah, and, man. Uh, I'm really happy and grateful that I was able to do this with you, dude. Always, always. You, uh, I, I started the top saying, you know, you're getting to be one of my closest friends in all of the Twitch streaming space. And um, I just really appreciate what you guys are building over there. And I'm really proud of what you guys are working on. It's funny because we've got so many parallels. You know, I feel like we're in a similar life stage. You know, we've got a lot of, you know, life changes happening along the same time, whether it be moving into different spaces or getting married to uh, to our better halves. It's uh, It's been fun to kind of go through this last year and a half process uh, of my life with you as a person I can reach out to and, and kind of relate to. So uh, I appreciate you very much, man. Absolutely, man. And like even just like our similar interests, you know, sports, yeah. golf, base, all that stuff. Yeah, man. man. Yeah, it's absolutely. Just been great. It's been awesome. <laughs> it has been. Okay. I still got to get that wedge, by the way. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Let me know when you do. Let me know I when will. you do. Um, I will. Give us a little bit of a rundown on how we can find you, your stream schedule, sort of your socials. Plug, plug all the things you got going on for us, and then we'll let you out of here. So honestly, you can find me anywhere if you search up Dbox8. I know Instagram's a little different, it's like D at Dbox8 underscore or something okay. weird like that. But uh, that's where you can find me. I'm live every Sunday at 11 Eastern. Yep. Uh, Tuesday and Thursday nights at 7 Eastern. I, love uh, it. I do it three days a week and yeah, like I said, my main thing is the TikTok, which is you can literally find me at Dbox8. Yep. Killing it. Absolutely killing it and. Uh... I'm proud of you. I'm excited for you guys. I hope everything in Canada can settle down so you guys can continue to take the next step of your life, you know, and, and kind of move forward with everything. But uh, other than that, keep doing what you're doing and, and uh, you know, keep keep uh, encouraging others and, and, you know, you and the kitty inspiring and, and, and helping people do stuff, man. It's awesome. I appreciate that, man. Yeah, bud. All right. I'll let you go. You're a legend. I appreciate you so much. Happy Sunday. We'll uh, we'll catch up with you soon, man. Sounds good, brother. All right, dude. Take her easy. Yeah, bye. My guy, D-Box. Yo, how awesome was that? Shout out to D-Box and, uh, and his community for stopping through. If you guys are in here from D-Box's uh, streams, I appreciate you. Thank you for hanging out with us. Happy Sunday. Uh, you guys are legends, and I, uh, I'm very grateful for you guys rocking with us. Um, Mikey, Livy, thank you guys for hanging out too.